Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are doing a installment of the weekly meta breakdown where we look at the best performing, highest win rate decks in the Explore Best of One format. If you're looking for standard, historic, best of one, best of three, check out the playlist. We try to get these out uh, weekly, uh, provided there is enough data to kind of show trends. Um, Explorer has actually been a format that I've been having a little bit of a trouble with getting enough data from untapped GG, what you see on the screen. Um, aggregates win rate data for users using the companion tool so you could track your win rates but then it aggregates it into the stats so the link for untapped is in the video description if you want to get started i'll paste these deck lists um but i've kind of like soured a bit on the format it's been kind of boring to be honest uh at least in the best of one uh, there's a lot of cool things happening in pioneer and then i feel like we're that meme where we're just outside of the fence like let us in let us in give us cards like everybody's on that red white convoke deck and we don't have reckless bushwhacker or there's just there, there's a couple cards we're missing for like a true pioneer experience but in any case um i'm pulling together what i can to give you a, a fresh look um, aftermath has had zero effect for the most part on the format in explore uh, largely haven't seen too much of an actual like towards the top of the meta being shook up. but we'll jump into it uh, those timestamps for each video for each deck. So if you want to jump into it, each specific you can. So May 18th to the present, which is the 25th, uh, Platinum to Mythic to get enough data. 36,000 games played. Top performing deck at 62% win rate is Boros Heroic. Um, so deck largely unchanged. Uh, it is using a bunch of target your own creature spells to get bonuses. So Favorite Hoplite gets counters and prevents combat damage. Swiss Sphere has prowess, so it gets larger. Dread Horde lets you recast stuff from your graveyard. Virtuoso Double Strike again lets you con connive, so you get to put a counter on it potentially, but also just get it very large. And then the 10th District uh, puts a counter on itself and scries. So what you're trying to do is give it like trample and power increase, draw a card, just lots of cheap ways to like minor power increases but cycle themselves. Uh, to give you extra bonuses you have protection in god's willing and god's willing over um brave the elements because you have red creatures in this deck and then you also want to be able to potentially target your stuff some more uh, homestead courage is two spells in one vigilance is really impactful when you're going offense defense reckless rage is a removal spell kill their thing but prop uh, your own ability and then uh, invigorating rampage is kind of the finisher card in the deck from there, we go to Selesnia Auras, so kind of a new deck, 61% uh, win rate. Uh, so this is a light pause uh, deck, so it is the Auras deck, so what you're trying to do is play creatures and then throw Auras on them for value. Light pause lets you kind of tutor up Auras uh, based on the CMC, so with a different name. So you're going to see a number of one of or two of Auras in the deck, which allow you to kind of situationally tutor when needed. So you have Light Pause that gets you tutored value, and then Shram, whenever you cast an aura, lets you draw a card. Hushbringers in the deck as a flying, ev uh, so like Evasion, Lifelink's really good, but also against stuff like Angels or anything with Enter the Battlefield style effects, you can um, stop those for your opponent. Uh, you have Protection with Selfless Savior, and then you can put counters on things with the Generous Visitor. In terms of the auras themselves, Audacity gives you a bonus a power and trample, and then potentially card draw. Cartouche gives you an extra body vigilance, first strike, or sorry, extra body with vigilance, and then first strike and plus power. Ethereal Armor gives you a boost based on the number of enchantments you control, as well as first strike. Griff's Bloom for flying. Uh, Sentinel's Eye is the one that gives you vigilance and can be escaped from the graveyard. You also have protection with Skrull, missed that one there. Uh, all that glitters is just more copies of Ethereal Armor. Heliod's Punishment as kind of a pseudo-removal spell. Uh, Rune the Substance for Lifelink. And then Warbriar Blessing as kind of a fight spell uh, attached to a aura. From there, we go to aforementioned Angel's deck. 58% win rate. Um, so there's kind of two variations of the Angel decks. There's the uh, six elf version, Lanawar elf, elfish mystic um, kind of ramp version. This one is just more the, I, I think I prefer this one just because you have more hits. I don't like hitting the elves off it. I would probably not play two Nykthos in the deck to be honest, because early game you end up getting into situations where you can't cast your Bishop of Wings. 
Um, generally speaking, you want all your lines to produce white, ideally. Um, so in this deck here, uh, what you're trying to do is basically use a combination of Kylo's Reconstruction and Collected Company to get multiple angels in play in a certain turn. Righteous Valkyrie, as well as Bishop of Wings, gain you uh, various amounts of life for four plus, usually. Uh, the goal is in a turn cycle to gain five life while you have a Resplendent Angel out, which then subsequently creates another angel, and then you kind of just snowball in that regard. Uh, Skyclave Apparition as removal, in addition uh, to a Johnny Strength of the Pride, which can be used as a, with its ultimate to be a one-sided board wipe, which has some utility there as well. We then go to Abzan Greasefang, 57%. Uh, so again, similar, there's kind of two versions. There's the Traverse version, um, and then now there's this uh, Eldritch Evolution version. So what you're trying to do with this deck is use these two drop creatures to basically set up your graveyard. And then with Eldritch Evolution, it's basically copies five, six, seven of Greasefang, because you sack one of these two drops, and then you go find your Greasefang, and then you can basically activate right away. I, I don't hate, well, I, I would actually like the boat, um, Skyship Sovereign, in addition to Perhelion. I think sometimes that card just ends up killing your opponent's creatures. It does, it does have some value, but uh, the full four can't stay awake. Like, maybe just trim one of these, play a boat, gives you nine hits. Um, Stitcher's in here, Thoughtseize kind of doing the boat, the, the full package. But that's kind of like where this deck is at right now. Um, not too much in terms of changes. For Mono White Humans, 56%. Um, the big change that we've seen in Pioneer that might be worth trying and explore as well is they are playing the new 2-drop Uncommon from Aftermath, the one that gives your other humans Ward 1, Copper Coat Vanguard, I think it's the name. Uh, I believe they've trimmed a couple copies of the Luminarch. You could probably get rid of Extraction Specialist. Just play that gives you a big boost in terms of your power but this is pretty much a stock list um, the big kind of variance between the deck is whether you're on the brave the elements plan being more aggressive or the ossification plan uh, being a little bit more uh, interactive with your opponent's board but playing human synergy um, thalia's lieutenant puts counters on your creatures and gets bigger itself adeline procs it and you just kind of go wide smashing with humans it's a very low to the ground aggressive uh, mono white deck for mono white, we go to mono red, and this is the cleave version of mono red, so 56% win rate. Um, with this deck here, again, just trying to go wide and then smack cards. So, ideally, your turn is you know, one drop into burning tree, two drop into potentially ember cleave on turn three. You have three creatures on turn three, um, you can get the ember cleave, otherwise, annex into cleave. It was kind of your win condition. You have Torbrand to, to add extra damage. If you do Torbrand in addition to the Chain Whirler, uh, it does deal th uh, three damage to each of your opponent's creatures. This is, with this deck, you can potentially race angels. I do like having some copies of Ferocidon in these decks, usually, um, gives you another element. Uh, 24 lines is where you should be with this build. People see mono red and they frequently say, oh, it's, it's a red based aggro deck. Let me play like 18 to 20 lines. Um, that doesn't always work, to be honest. Uh, that's usually for those sly mono red decks. Uh, this was kind of the deck shell that I was playing a lot in historic before wizards really popped up and made it hard to play that deck. Um, but even with that, I was only on two four drops, and I always play 24 lands. You really need to hit that third land, and there's so many utility lands in mono red between the dens, the castles, uh, and the Ramanop that getting to five, six lands is not really that bad in this deck. Um, then we go to five color fight vampire rigging concoction. Uh, it's really just uh, Golgari try to cheat into play. So you're basically either using Soren Impervious Bloodlord or Fight Rigging. Either of those two cards will allow you to cheat into play a Galta and Marvin. Maverin? Marvin? Marvin. I, I prefer Marvin. Let's call it Galta and Marvin Gay. <laughs> um, that would be a funny collab. Um, so we got uh, this one here that lets you just either create another big body or multiple vampires itself. You also have a Xander here that. Basically, uh, they discard half their hand, they mill when it attacks, and then uh, target opponent sacrifices 
half the non-line permits they control rounded down when it dies. So some utility there. So a lot of kind of powerful hits. Uh, you have your eight elves to ramp you early, fatal push as an interaction. Really interesting to see just main board rave enfeeblement. Uh, just really respecting like the Grease Fang decks, uh, as well as Mono White, incidentally. Um, but you're able to kind of get fight rigging off with either Regisaur or Shakedown Heavy in the deck. So kind of an interesting deck there. It's in a Bosch uh, companion deck. And then lastly, so this one here, I, I, I dug deep. I dug deep to find a deck that played an Aftermath card. Uh, so we had to go to the, the bottom dredges of Bronze to Mythic. So somewhere in that grand, grand, grand scheme of things, uh, 100 people played a deck, and it is the Nisa Elementals deck. So Nisa works that if you hit a second land for a turn, uh, you reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an elf or elemental. So it's basically just card draw uh, in the deck. And then when you play a land, you get to add mana of any color. So you're playing kind of six Lotus Cobra style effects with card advantage. And then you're just playing a whole bunch of elementals, Omnath, Omnath 2, Electric Boogaloo. Actually, Omnath 3, Omnath 4. Um, and then you're just kind of ramping ahead. You could copy things. Risen Reef gets you a bunch of triggers to put extra lands into play. Escape of the Wilds lets you put extra lands into play. Uh, Ashaya treats all your creatures as lands as well, which triggers the Nisa, and then Storm the Festival can help you find any of your package there. Um, so that's it for the week. Let me know if you're playing anything interesting in Explore, um, and we will be back hopefully next week with some new content for both Best of One and Best of Three. Uh, in any case, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one, and stay safe out there.